Greetings, welcome, bienvenidos, hola, aloha, ni hao, namaste, konnichiwa, bonjour, bonjourno, sawadee karab, guten tak, ja wee va cat bang, half a day, privyet, jajanendra, salam, shalom, peace, now, go vegan, peace how, go vegan, it's go vegan radio with Bob Linden, now broadcasting and podcasting for 20 years, but uh, who's counting? Um, well, what can I say? Um, no, really, I'm, I'm asking you, uh, what, what can I say? It is a very sensitive post-free speech censorship era, so I'm asking you, what can I say? <laughs> what am I allowed to say, and, and how offensive can it be? And who judges what, what is offensive? I mean, I've, I've, uh, I've, I've now, in, in, in this new era, I have pledged allegiance to self-censorship. I'm really watching my words and uh, the topics I discuss. Right now, if somebody asks me, uh, how are things? I just say, things are plural. And if somebody asks me, uh, how is everything? I say, everything is singular. Uh, if people ask me, what's new? I say, uh, this moment, this moment. I'm trying not to be controversial here, huh? So, how are you doing? Well, pretty much, uh, you know, how I'm doing, on, well, basically by brain cell activity. I, I think that's how I'm doing. What's up? Uh, that's a two-letter word that starts with U and ends with P. <laughs> Much like a six-pack of Bud Ultra or Michelob Ultra, or whatever that is. Uh, not to offend anyone who uh, thought this was an alcohol-free zone. Um, I am walking on uh, the non-existent eggshells of uh, vegan eggs and walking on the non-existent eggshells of a tofu scramble yummy <laughs> uh, you know for years i've been pushing for animals all animals to be uh called you know him or her not it because i thought it makes them more like things or products like thought it was enough to push for him or her. And now in the world of gender issues, I don't know, really don't know what's right. I mean, if it makes my adopted poodle happy, uh, er, to be called, uh, you know, self-licker, okay, fine. If my adopted chihuahua is happy, er, to be called leg humper, okay. I'm all for adding those new companion animal pronouns to the vocabulary. And uh, if you don't mind, I think I'll just start calling all people it. <laughs> you know, uh, I, I, I hate to admit it, although I used to almost be proud of it, that I have been arrested maybe six or seven times for free speech issues related to animal rights advocacy. I know. I apologize for fighting for free speech. Oh, and I shouldn't use that word, fighting. <laughs> I apologize uh, for... I apologize for being assaulted, handcuffed, detained, and jailed, for peacefully exercising my right to peaceful free speech at numerous peaceful animal rights demonstrations. Um, I, I, I was never found guilty uh, because what I was doing was peaceful and constitutionally protected. Uh, sometimes uh, the police violated my rights. On other occasions, the police protected my rights. Um, oh, on one occasion, you might say... Uh, 
I was found guilty of exercise. I, I was found guilty of exercising my constitutional rights because for some reason, my free speech case was assigned to traffic court in Beverly Hills, which uh, confused everyone, including the judge. I mean, everybody's up there. No, I really, I stopped at the stop sign. I, I you know, the light wasn't red yet, and you know, um, and I'm there on constitutional issues. So uh, the traffic court judge gave me community service and uh, had to put in, what was it, however many hours working for Go Vegan Radio. Um, and uh, he must say Go Vegan Radio board member, our good friend Julie Meskel, really got slammed or s- slammered uh, when her free speech uh, case went free of the Constitution, if you can believe it. Uh, you know, she she uh, did a protest, just basically handing out flyers. And you know, in in most of these uh, most of these laws that were meant to discourage free speech, uh, you know, um, and they they often had activists arrested for trespassing, but in that same law, in those trespassing laws, it would say, you know, does not apply to those engaged in constitutionally protected activity. So what happened in uh, Julie's case uh, in court? The judge ruled that they could uh, ban the use of the word constitution, so nobody actually knew the law under which she was being prosecuted. And, uh, and, and, and there you have it, seems, who, who, who could have known even what the future might bring? Anyway, so all I can say about free speech is use it or lose it, and uh, when you do lose it, you'll be sorry. And uh, with censorship, nobody will ever know that you're sorry, <laughs> or probably know where you are, or you know, where you've been taken, you know, you're, you're happy about who is being, uh, uh, you know, uh, censored today, right? Uh, you won't be so happy when it's you tomorrow, so, and we were at the, fro- at the forefront, hmm? and if any of what I just said offends you, um, I retract it all, um, please just, uh, Insert only what you wanted to hear, and uh, oh, so do do you do you want to hear a Polish joke, huh? You think that would be offensive? Um, they historically they have been right, but what if it's a Polish joke on us? Uh, wouldn't it be funny if Poland were more concerned about civil liberties than we are? That would be quite a joke, huh? Well, it's actual reality here. So let me refer to an article in USSA uh, News where it says, Poland's justice minister announced a legal initiative aimed at enabling Internet users to file complaints against the removal of online posts as well as the uh, creation of a special court for freedom of speech. We're talking Poland here now, okay? It says uh, Justice Min- Minister uh, Zbigniew Ziobro said the aim of the bill was to give Internet users the feeling that their rights are protected and that their posts cannot be arbitrarily removed from online platforms. So, uh, here's what was said here. Uh, oh, oh, so the full name of the bill in Poland is The Law on Freedom of Expressing One's Own Views and Searching and Disseminating in, uh, Information on the Internet. So, according to his uh, Facebook page, which I wonder if this is... Maybe it's not there anymore. Um, Ziobro, uh, a free speech advocate, said, quote, 
I was born and raised among people for whom freedom was the most precious of values. In Poland, we are so attached to freedom because we know what it's like when someone tries to limit it. For close to 50 years, we lived in a country in which censorship was practiced, in which Big Brother told us how we are meant to live and what we are meant to feel and what we are not allowed to think and say or write. That is why we are so concerned with any attempt to limit freedom. One of the symptoms of freedom, oh, sorry, one of the synonyms of freedom for us, Poles, has always been the Internet. Does that, synonyms? Okay, well, okay, so I guess the Internet uh, represents uh, freedom to Poland, uh, if I'm interpreting into English here now. Um, so he continues in his quote, it is the most democratic medium in history, talking about the Internet, a forum on which everyone can have a voice. It is a tool which gives everyone the opportunity to have an impact in a way which was unknown to us even a dozen or so years ago. The freedoms that came with the lack of regulation of the Internet had numerous positive aspects, but there are also negative consequences with, uh, with time. It became... Uh, dominated by huge international corporations, wealthier and more powerful than many nations. These corporations treat our online activity merely as a source of revenue and a tool to increase their global domination. They have also introduced their own standards of political correctness and they fight those who oppose them. We are now increasingly faced with practices we believed were left in the past. The censoring of free speech, once the domain of totalitarian authoritarian regimes, is now back, but in a new form, run by corporations who silence those who think differently. The discussion consists in the exchange of views, not in silencing people. We do not have to agree with what our opponents write, but we cannot forbid anyone from expressing views that do not contravene the law. Everything which is not forbidden is allowed. Also on the internet, there is no tolerance for censorship, nor can there ever be no tolerance for state censorship such as the one poland faced under communism or the private type which we are seeing today freedom of speech is a cornerstone of democracy that is why we must defend it it is not up to algorithms or the owners of huge corporations to decide what opinions are correct and which aren't Poland will always stand at the guard of democratic values, including freedom of speech. The owners of social media networks cannot operate above the law. That is why we will do everything to define uh, the, uh, the frame of operations of Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and other similar platforms. In Poland, we will regulate with appropriate national regulation. We will also suggest similar laws be passed in all of the EU. Social media platforms have to serve us and not the interests of their powerful owners. Everyone has the right to freedom of speech, and Poland will defend that right. End quote. Whew, that's... Uh inspirational there huh so the new law the new law in poland is due to be passed uh, that would fine big tech uh, or big brother tech firms a staggering 2.2 million dollars every time they unconstitutionally censor lawful free speech online 
So, uh, and, you know, they're going to have a, a procedure for that that's kind of fast-tracked. So that is uh, pretty amazing, right? That, uh, you know, when it, when it comes to free speech, the joke is on us, on us, you know, the, 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 the Polish joke is on us. So in Poland, my hate speech is protected. So I can say I hate Polish sausage. In fact, I hate all sausage made from animals. I, I hate sausage and I hate hot dogs and bacon and ham and pastrami and corned beef and salami, and deli meats, all of which uh, fall into a category called processed meats. Now, did you know that the World Health Organization has classified all processed meats as a human carcinogen? Also saying that red meat is a possible carcinogen. But for sure, the World Health Organization says processed meats are a, are a, a, a carcinogen. So, I demand that uh, uh, Big Brother Tech uh, remove all favorable content related to processed meats and red meat. Uh, all of that. Remove it now from fascist book or Hitler. Um, and uh, screw you, Tube. Let's uh, let's uh, do a class action suit against uh, Big uh, Brother Tech, huh? Come on, do what's right. Do what's right. You know this is, you know this is according to the World Health Organization. So the precedent has been set. So um, I would say, you know, that, uh, in fact, the World Health Organization should mandate that we wear a mask whenever we are within six feet of, uh, you know, processed meat. Whenever we're within six feet of sausage, hot dogs, bacon, ham, salami, deli slices, any processed meat, red meat. And uh, really, if you want to get down to it... Uh, you know, we should we should be wearing a mask within six feet of all flesh, uh, fish, dairy, and eggs. You know, if you really want to protect your family's health, cancer, heart disease, wouldn't you wear a mask to protect them from that? Diseases that, you know, diabetes, diseases, stroke, diseases that have killed millions of Americans, and you're not willing to wear a mask huh do as dr fauci dr ouchie fauci says uh, actually do as he says but not what he does i mean did you see did you see him interviewed on the quid pro cuomo show on uh, cnn 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 um on the cnn television network ouchie fauci said what he missed most when he's in D.C., away from New York, are hot dogs and pastrami, <laughs> both classified as human carcinogens by the World Health Organization. His, his organization. He's, he's violating... It's, it's like... Fauci taking off his mask. Well, he takes off his mask to consume hot dogs and pastrami, huh? So I demand that that interview be banned from all social uh, network platforms, all social media platforms, uh, along with, uh, really, I demand, maybe we should have a class action lawsuit. I demand that uh, any favorable content, any recipes involving carcinogenic processed meats or probably carcinogenic uh, red meat this is according to the world health organization i mean you'll see you know consumption of uh, animal protein connected to cancer heart disease you know all of those diseases elsewhere but right now we're just talking about the who uh and baba o'reilly uh dr baba o'reilly here um 
So really, all all of that, any any favorable content related to meat, dairy, fish, and eggs, should immediately be removed from the Big Brother Tech. Um, and so yeah, I I hate that people eat meat, dairy, fish, and eggs, and that they I I hate that they wear leather, feathers, fur, wool, and silk, and I hate that animals are used in experiments and, and in products. I hate it. I hate it. So, I mean, so, I mean, if, if that's hate speech, go ahead, go ahead and ban me. Go ahead and deplatform me, you know. At least, at least I know I'll get hurt in Poland, all right? And, uh, you know, one person's hate speech is another person's love speech, I love animals so much that I hate that they are exploited and abused and imprisoned and killed. I hate that people think that, uh, you know, there are uh, humane ways to do all of that. I hate it, you know. But, you know, one person's hate speech is another person's love speech. Uh, but I must say, I do hate hating what happens to animals, and uh, I would just uh, hate it, you know, uh, if uh, if uh, you know that love speech were uh, were censored. My hate speech is love speech, and I'm I don't really want it to be censored. But I'll understand if it happens, and I'll be proud to be heard in Poland, you know. So anyway, less hate, more love, right? Coming up on today's show, less hate, more love, and, uh, you know, less talk, more music, too. Um, you'll love hearing about 21 vegan companies we love, you know. <laughs> Why limit it to 21? Well, it's 2021, you know, so, and it's the 20th anniversary of Go Vegan Radio with Bob Linden. But, okay, so, if it were 2099 right now, okay, we'd highlight 99 vegan companies, but, you know, it's 2021, so, uh, let's see, in 2099, we'll be, uh, celebrating the 98th anniversary of this talk show, and that'll be my 115th year of being vegan, so we'll be patient for that, right, okay, uh, but right now, let's go with, uh, hey, I'm vegan for 37 years, and this here show just turned 20. So, who would have imagined that? I thought it would last two weeks. Now, 20 years later. 20 years of opportunities for you to uh, donate to this show. And how many uh, times have you uh, taken advantage of those opportunities? How many times have you uh, donated over 20 years? Eh, you can make up for it now. You can make up for lost time. Make up for lost time by hitting the donate button at GoVeganRadio.com where there are almost 650 free archive shows for your listening pleasure. Um, of course, with your donation, you'll be supporting the most important show in all media in the history of the universe as we are really the only... Say, so you've given... Maybe you've given money to NPR or PBS or who knows what, right? But they're not like this show. They're not like Go Vegan Radio with Bob Linden. We're the only program with the only action plan to save billions of animals every year. To save billions and trillions of animals. The, the, we have the, the only action plan actually to save the planet. To save the planet. Nothing but going vegan will save the planet from climate change and deforestation and water scarcity, resource depletion, habitat destruction. We, we promote the only action plan to end the mass extinction already in progress. The only action plan to save your family from the ills of hot dogs and pastrami when you won't even hear it from the nation's number one doctor. And uh, that's right. So, we, you know, 
will save your family from hot dogs and pastrami when even hot dog and pastrami breath Fauci will not do it. Remember, in the beginning, Fauci said, don't wear a mask. Then he said, wear a mask. Then he said, wear two masks. So, is he thinking clearly? So, it, 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 it is... Can you think clearly if you're breathing in the, you know, your exhalation, your, your, your hot dog and pastrami breath? You're supposed to breathe that out. So does breathing back in hot dog and pastrami breath affect your thinking? Does it affect your health? We need a study. Where is the Lancet when we really need it? You know? Did you, did you, by the way, did you happen to see the, there was a leaked video of uh, Facebook's uh, Zuck, uh, Zuckerberg on uh, an internal Facebook Zoom call where he was expressing real concerns about the new COVID vaccine affecting DNA, RNA. He was, uh, he was definitely worried about this new nanotech uh you know um this nano nanotech basically experiment on people it's, you know it's an experiment on society i guess they, he he's not for nanotech he's for you know big uh brother tech anyway so so you know zuckerberg was really like all worried about this vaccine so what did he do he got uh he got uh, he 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 did a quick interview with uh, pastrami and hot dog breath Fauci, uh, who simply said, uh, "Oh no, it doesn't affect DNA." And Zuckerberg uh, just you know took him at face value, or took him at Facebook value, or was it you know face value with one mask or two masks? I I, I don't even know you know so. Um, you know, and and then you know what what if what effect does the vaccine have on people who who eat a lot of pastrami or hot dogs? You know, we need we need research, okay? We need the Lancet to look into this. So anyway, sorry, pastrami is not love speech. I, I said we were gonna. It'll be more love, you know, more more music, less talk. I mean, more love, less hate. So back to love. We're going to have, uh, we love Vanessa Marceau of Alora Wellness. You may know her as uh, a correspondent for Lunch Break Live and Jane Unchained. Okay, well, she's coming up on today's show. We did a collaboration uh, to come up with uh, 21 companies to receive a uh, Highest Integrity Award. And uh, so we will talk about those 21 companies receiving the Highest Integrity Award, that coming up on uh, today's show. Oh, Pfizer and uh, Moderna uh, didn't make the list, uh, you know, maybe maybe next year, okay? So, but, uh, but Evolution, vegan dog and cat food, did Daisy's favorite dog food. She's been eating it for eight years. Daisy, the love of my life, vegan now for eight years. And uh, you can uh, look into Evolution. You can order online at PetFoodShop.com, PetFoodShop.com, or you can call 800-659-0104 for Evolution Vegan Dog and Cat Food, a family business for over 30 years now. Not one product recall. And... Uh, you know, Eric, uh, you know, these are hard times financially, so I'm sure that if you call, Eric will give you a break on price. If you call 800-659-0104, Evolution for all stages of dogs and cats' lives. And um, there's, uh, you can get the uh, organic variety, so check it out. And also, I just want to put in a word to uh, support Please support your local vegan restaurants, your local 100% vegan restaurants. 
please support them uh, in these uh, in these hard times. Get you know get takeout from them. What whatever you can do. Um, you know they they are the community treasures and uh, you know um, one I happen to really love is Vegetarian House in San Jose, one of the uh, best vegan restaurants in all the world. It is a hundred percent vegan, non GMO, a hundred percent organic, very delicious. Check out the menu at vegetarianhouse dot us uh, or vegetarianhouse dot com. And, uh, you know, one of these days when we get back to normalcy, uh, and what is normalcy? One mask, two masks, uh, you tell me. No masks? Is that even possible? Imagine the day of no masks and actually going into restaurants and catering, you know, having events catered. Vegetarian House, you know, had a just a massive successful catering business, but, you know, that uh, went down the tubes when, uh, you know, all of this struck. But we're looking forward to better days. And let's celebrate uh, the uh, wonderful... We're going to celebrate 21 vegan companies coming up with Vanessa Marceau. Although, really, all 100% vegan companies are our heroes right now. So, And uh, I want to thank you for joining us today. And again... You can support us with a donation at GoVeganRadio.com. This is Go Vegan Radio with Bob Linden at GoVeganRadio.com. Hard to believe, but here we are at our 20th anniversary. Unbelievable. A show that was supposed to last two weeks now at its 20th anniversary. When I started this show, um, I was a vegan for a mere 17 years. <laughs> now, 37 years as a vegan. So, I guess wow. I should... Give thanks to uh, Mother Nature for providing all of the uh, fruits, vegetables, nuts, grains, seeds, and beans over all these years so so I could actually eat and, uh, and also the vegan cupcakes and potato chips. But we won't talk about that. We'll talk about kale and yams and uh, lentils uh, and not, uh, not talk about how uh, the uh, vegan cupcakes and uh, potato chips. So... On today's show, what we did, we did a feature, and um, actually, we did a whole New Year's party. We did uh, uh, the Reggae Vegan World Party, Mm -hmm. which is available at go.goveganradio.com slash party, and it's a five-hour extravaganza with very amazing reggae music and very amazing speakers including my next guest, Vanessa Marceau, who uh, is with uh, Alora Wellness, and uh, you also know her from hosting Lunch Break Live. Mm -hmm. And how are you today, Vanessa? I am doing really well. I just want to say congratulations to you on your 20 years of this amazing radio show, and also on 37 years of being vegan. You are an inspiration and a trailblazer. And I'm so grateful for you. Well, you know you can live at least that long as a vegan. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you know you can make it at least 37 years. So That's for me. <laughs> and, uh, no health problems, at least that I know of, because I don't go to the doctor. But so far, so good. You know, like heart is beating. I yeah. Ex- I expected to only live to be 47 uh, anyway, because my, my father died of a heart attack at a young age. My mother died shortly thereafter. So... I am well past expectations, and I did this for the animals anyway, so I thought you, people were saying, oh, are you going to, my future ex-mother-in-law was saying, uh, <laughs> you're going to die if you eat like that, you know, so, and uh, I probably still will at some point in the future, but uh, I think. I, I, I think chances are that you will at some point, you know. <laughs> you didn't have to agree with me, I was just 
I'm a betting person. You'll, you'll, at some point, you'll die. <laughs> I'm reasonably certain of that. Well, but, if 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 we make it to um, 2099, we would be able to pick out 99 wonderful vegan companies that uh, would win the highest integrity award. But <laughs> since it's only 2021, Vanessa and I got together and uh, did a collabo to uh, figure out 21 of the great vegan companies out there who would uh, merit the highest integrity award. Though if you think about it, if, if it's really a 100% vegan company, they all should get it. So <laughs> there, there are far more than 21. And we tried to have some in various cat different categories, but there are so many more that we could have mentioned that are just as integrity filled and that have just as high standards. But, uh, you know, we only have so much time in the day. Well, like I said, and when we make it to 2099, yeah. which, uh, you know, the vegan diet, longevity, we'll probably make it there. Uh, then we'll be able to have 99 companies that year. So we'll look forward to that. But it was 21 uh, this year. Oh, and um, what happened with uh, Alora Wellness? We were all excited when you opened your your place in Altadena, right? Um was a very exciting opening. We had so many great events. We had Patrick Baboumian, who stopped by for a massage. We had Will Tuttle who came to speak to us, John Pierce spoke. We had so many great events, great pole dance classes, great food brunches, boutique, healing arts. It was going so well and going so strongly, and I was so excited. My last pole class that I taught, I was thinking, wow, these are really starting to happen. It's really picking up. This is becoming successful. I have these regular students. This is so great. Next day, lockdown. Everything shut down couldn't do anything inside and given that it was a community space you really can't do that virtually even though I can do some classes here and there virtually you really can't have a community center in that way and so I saw this is not happening and and uh, I had to shut down and I decided that I didn't foresee any time soon of this uh, shutdown being lifted so I did end up completely closing down but the good news is that it opens me up to do the next step of Alora Wellness, which is the international step of opening an intentional vegan community that's completely off the grid, self-sustaining. We grow our own food, make our own soaps and toiletries and different products, and we are off the corporate consumer grid. And I'm hoping to be able to do that with a nice piece of property in the south of France. So that is what is coming next, bigger and better. And in the meantime, I'm the Vegangelist. Veganessa is the Vegangelist going on the vegan world tour, spreading news of the veganomy. I'm starting with Turkey, and I'm going to be leaving shortly to film it and spread the word about veganism and see what's going on in the different countries that I can get into, get being an American. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's uh, wonderful. That's uh, wonderful that you. Uh, well, you're 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 committed for sure, definitely. Like, and it's. Uh, I should be committed, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, and and I think what don't you have a license to practice uh, psychotherapy? So you just did an analysis of yourself. Is that? Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I I am fully licensed to diagnose myself. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm I'm afraid to ask. Uh, <laughs> about me so uh, <laughs> when when I was in graduate school we I had a joke with my friend the DSM which was our diagnostic statisticians manual uh, on diagnosing and I said to her she's like I think I have a lot of these disorders because you always think you have what you're reading about and I said listen your page is one through 300 and I'm pages 300 through 600 like we got it covered between us <laughs> Well, don't, 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 you know, who would be attracted to psychiatry, right? Uh, anyway, right? <laughs> People who are curious about the human spirit and what makes us tick. That's mm -hmm. who. Okay. Very good. Uh, okay. So, um, and what makes us tick our, our best is being vegan, by the way. Uh, if, oh. if, we, if we haven't noticed, that's the, the best way of ticking. <laughs> and it's the most morally congruent for all of us because 
it means that we're not harming anybody. We're living in a way that doesn't harm. So there's no moral blight on our conscience. There's no shame. There's no shoulds of how you should consume, how you should live, how you should treat others. And we are doing something that frees us and makes us lighter and also doesn't impede our whole digestive process by having to consume and digest animal products. And it's not ruining the planet, unlike animal products. Yeah, the best action we can take. And that's, uh, I guess that's why I've been doing this for 20 years. I mean, it's been a a challenge. I mean, I thought, you know, this will last a couple of weeks and I'll go back to like having a real life, but um, <laughs> so, <laughs> whatever that means, but it yeah. was more like, wow, I have to raise money to pay radio stations and radio networks. Where's my money? Oh, I have to couch surf. Okay. Well, that makes it interesting too. I guess the book will be interesting when I get to that, you know, on, oh, yeah. on, on, on the 20 years of uh, having yeah. to get this show together and the radio stations and the networks and all the insanity that goes along with it. So so in fact maybe i'm asking for analysis right now just by putting that out there right so um where'd you go i'm not hearing you oh i'm here can you hear me yeah Uh okay um okay so um we decided to get together and come up with the highest integrity awards for 2021 and 21 companies and uh so um let's have you uh Start us off on this list here and see right. Sounds whom we good. admire, whom we admire for their uh, high integrity. Absolutely. The first one is a perennial favorite, Evolution Dog and Cat Food. Yes. They have Evolution. been in business over 30 years. Yeah. No product recalls, no chemical preservatives. They also have organic products, no mold inhibitors. It's so easy and so possible for your dog and cat to go vegan. They don't need meat. They need nutrients. So they need to get those nutrients. And as long as they get them, they can be healthy and happy. And so Evolution Dog and Cat Food proves that to us over and over. Yes, yes. And uh, it's proven because Daisy loves it. And that's what she eats every day. And she's been vegan now for eight years. Wow. Yeah. awesome yeah Yeah. daisy's happy and healthy and uh uh, vegan for eight years she loves it and uh if people ever were to look at the ingredients in commercial so-called pet food um they'd be seeking out an evolution you know right right away when you consider it i mean they're they're rendered dogs and cats and uh just uh, god flying it's it's it's, it's just not, growth. The euthanizing agents of dogs and cats winds up, you know, I mean, sewage and blood, plasma, uh, you know, spent uh, chicks, spent hens, uh, ground baby chicks. All, it's just a mess. Um, so, and evolution, like you said, <clears throat> has been around for over thirty years, and uh, not one product recall. So that's that's impressive. And what I want to say is that our our furry friends are members of the family. And if that's a member of your family, wouldn't you want to feed them high quality stuff, not just the cheap crap? You want to feed them high quality. You're not going to have as many vet bills. You're not going to have as many problems. So they are worth it, our furry friends. Yes. And I'm furry, all, all of them. So that's number one. Number two, Miyoko's Creamery. She uses a traditional technique for cheese making that is just cruelty free. She has a line of dairy free butters and cheeses and also has a sanctuary. So I appreciate her for that. I've seen her at some animal activism events and I just really admire that she has this great mega business that's becoming so huge. You can find her products all over converting people left and right because dairy is often the hardest for people to give up because of those literally addictive case of morphines which are in the morphine family mm-hmm, right that right. are found in cow breast mm-hmm. fluid and so she not only is converting people that way but through a loving sanctuary so oh, that's great we love miyoko and uh then she i think she got started like her initial success was that she won a chocolate chip cookie vegan chocolate chip cookie recipe contest for an airline and oh uh, wow. Yeah. yeah. And That's so cool. suddenly 
suddenly she won that and then suddenly she's like you know probably like an i love lucy episode of like now nah, what what do we do now thousands of chocolate chip cookies come on for you know <laughs> so, that's a, great yeah 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 so yep we love miyoko okay so okay. let's let's uh, continue on our uh, highest uh, achievement award winners for 2021 <laughs> <laughs> Number three is Harmless Harvest. They do organic coconut water. They also have some dairy-free yogurts and smoothies. They do it the ethical way. They're not exploiting monkeys in Thailand like some coconut places. They believe in regenerative agriculture and contribute to that. And so we really appreciate that they are conscious, not just vegan, but also thinking of the ethics of production and the whole process of it. Right, and it's an organic uh, coconut water, and I think the most delicious. I mean, it is. It's, it's my my personal favorite. Um, but personal it, favorite that would make anyone love it. So <laughs> got that one. Then yeah. number four is the Forager product project, also a sus sustainable and organic company since 2013, family owned and operated yogurt plant based creamery. Yes, and I, I really like their yogurts, too. And then uh, they have, you know, like yogurt uh, beverages that I guess are like kefir. Right? Oh, they're uh, so good. Yeah, very, very so, delicious. Yes. Then we have the Loving Hut Restaurant Empire. Master Ching Hai, who is such a visionary and participated in the Climate Healers Conference, the Global Fire Conference that we just had in December. Uh, it's international, 35 plus countries, natural products. She very strongly advocates vegan lifestyle, world veganism through world peace or world peace through world veganism. And so she's an outspoken advocate for. Uh, she's a, a great uh, humanitarian and uh, just such a great champion for the animals. Like I've I've loved Supreme Master Ching Hai for for years i mean for you know she's really into it for the animals and even wants there to be vegan law to you know outlaw cruelty and use of animals which why not yeah. you know if we had our priorities together uh you know a lot of the laws would be uh, changed in a lot of different directions including um those that would be kind to animals by not eating them or wearing them or using them and uh i mean they 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 do rescue i know that they they ran to haiti when there was the earthquake whenever there's uh some sort of catastrophe around the world they they go there and they uh they feed vegan meals to people and um you know uh a, a few years back i actually received the shining world hero award <laughs> I, 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 I hate to bring it up, but if I didn't, uh, nobody else would right now. So, uh, <laughs> so, well, it's, it, so it was the, the I'll bring it up every time you and I talk. Okay. All right. So um, it was the Shining World Hero Award. And um, Okay, thanks again for joining us today on Go Vegan Radio with Bob Linden. Now commemorating 20 years as the first vegan talk show in commercial mainstream media. We started 20 years ago on KRLA in Los Angeles and quickly added stations in San Francisco, KYCY, and then The Quake and Green 960. We were on the Air America radio network. We were on the GCN network. We've been on left-wing stations, right-wing stations. We're, we're everywhere. Everywhere where people are interested in food and animals and health and the environment, uh, which has uh, led to us being being on uh, as a, you know on air and uh, as a podcast for 20 years now so please support our work we've been involved with uh, media 
and uh, producing special events. Um, also, we uh, talked about those 21 vegan companies receiving the highest integrity award on our New Year show, which you can still hear. You can go to go.goveganradio.com slash party for our New Year's reggae vegan party. Um, check it out. Um, you will enjoy the music. It's a five-hour presentation, so you can go there. Or you can support us with a donation at goveganradio.com. Thank you for listening.